Hallelujah. Praise God. And then we became friends there. Hallelujah. Amazing, amazing, amazing person. And you will be so blessed today. Just open your heart. Just open your heart to receive God's word. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, um, with the, can you stand up on your feet and then help me welcome? Her name is Oro. And it means gold. Woo! Welcome to Zion City. Good morning. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. Kabul Saleta Kababali Kebaros, Kani Kuta la Kabate Kuna Bani Kuse Shere Kabul. Oh, Kabani Kebaros, she le Keba Kabos, she le Tekabos, she la Bosi la Kabata Kani Kuse le Kebabos, Yema Kabos, Shakani Tula Kabos, She Kabani Kuta la Kabate. Tell him that you are not living this place without him changing things in your life. Na kite kula bosi le keba kabo shale keba bos. Shina ne kute kula kaba si le te shula kabo. Ye kaba 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 se sheta kabo. E kaba baka si le keba kabo. Oh, governor of the city, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the governor of the city. We just give you thanks, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for gracing us, for honoring us with your presence. We thank you, Lord, for giving us life this morning. We thank you, Lord, for health. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings this week. We thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do in our lives. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. Don't believe anything he tells you about you. (laughs) Don't believe. (laughs) Don't believe. Please have your seat. And the word says, and those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Do you feel called? Do you feel called? Do you feel called by him? You know that your justification does not come from you. It comes from God. It comes from God. 
you might be small, you might be big, you might be fine, you might be ugly. But if the Holy Spirit does not dwell within you, nothing. You're nothing. Absolutely nothing. You can do nothing. You can't even fulfill your destiny because you were birthed by God for a purpose. So if you are not in God, you cannot achieve the purpose. Amen. So today we'll be talking about a manner of men. We're in peculiar times. We're in very peculiar times. Please forgive me. I'm going to be using my phone. <laughs> we're in peculiar times. You know, while we, while we come to church, while we come to church and we wait on God, we also see that around us things are happening. We can't deny that a boy was killed by Boko Haram for professing Jesus. They killed him, just like that. We can't deny that there is um, this virus, coronavirus in China. We can't deny. We can't deny. So how do we exist in a world that seems to be falling apart and stand, and stand sure? When the apostles asked Jesus about the end times, he told them, so we're reading from Matthew 24 now. They said, tell us, they said, when would this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. It says the end is still to come. So when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, when you hear of people coming in the name of the Lord, be not alarmed, for the end is still to come. It means that the signs of the tribulations, the signs of, it means before the Lord comes, there will be wars and rumors of wars. And the Lord has still not come. And then verse 7 says, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. The Lord has still not come. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will, you will be hated by all nations because of me. At the time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray each other, hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Do we experience that? Do we see our brothers leaving God because of just the experiences of the church? Not experiences of outside, experiences they are getting in church. Their love for God is growing cold. But the one who stands firm in the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Then, then the end will come. So the end will come only when the gospel has been preached to all the nations. But the signs will appear before the end comes. And if you are living with me in Nigeria and you are staying in the world and we are all together here, you can tell that, you know, we're in the end times. And as much as you have not heard it since maybe you were in primary school, the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. <laughs> the kingdom of the Lord is at hand. The king is coming. The end is near. You have no, we have no luxury anymore of pretending that we cannot see. The Bible says that we see God. We know him by the things he created. It means that you can know the times and the seasons by even the things you are seeing and by the leading of the spirit of God. And these are peculiar times, very peculiar times for us. Peculiar times that we have to stay in God. Peculiar times for Christians because it says the gospel, until the gospel is preached to all the nations. So whose work is that? Whose work is that? So when I said you believe you're called, you know, you don't need anointing oil to be poured on your head before you receive the great commission of the Lord to do his work. You don't need that. You only need the Holy Spirit to speak to your brother and to speak to your sister. The kingdom of the Lord is at hand. 
So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. This is verse 15. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful will it be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now. And never I called again. So the end will only come the end will only come when the gospel is preached. Yet the tribulations, as you can see, would increase. From the rumors of wars to wars, from wars to pestilence, from that we can see that it will be even dreadful to be taking flight. They said pray that in those days, pregnant, um, how dreadful it will be for nursing mothers and pregnant women. You don't have the luxury. You don't have the luxury right now. You are hearing the good news. You don't have the luxury of carrying weight. You have no luxury of carrying weight. Because in those times, in the times that are coming, in the times that are coming, you would need only yourself. So when... You are now supposed now. Now. Scripture says that the day of salvation is now. Is now. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. It is now. You are supposed to do the work for those times. Because in those times, you don't want to be like the virgins. You do not want to be like the virgins who do not have lamp, um, um, oil for their lamp. You do not want to be like the virgins. Let's go on. We'll finish the scripture. It's not, it's not so much. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days were cut short. Apparently, the days have even been cut short. These trials and tribulations that will come while we exist here, and these trials and tribulations that exist in our surrounding, while we exist as Christians, they have even been cut short by God in grace, by the elect in Jesus, by his grace. They've been cut short. Yet, the trials exist in that capacity. Imagine if it was even more. So the days will be cut short. At the time, if anyone says to you, look here, is the, look here, here is the Messiah. There he is. Do not believe it. For false Messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out. Here he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of man. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible in the west, so will be the coming of man. So it says do not believe it if they tell you this is it, this is it, this is it. That it will be visible to you. You will be able to discern by the spirit that this is the son of man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Wherever there is dead body, you see the vultures. It's just saying that it will be certain that if the son of man is there, you will know. Wherever there's um, carcass, you must see the vultures. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the son of man in the heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the son of man coming on, on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. With power and great glory. The day we see his face. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. They will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender, its leaves come out. You know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you will know that it is, you will know that it is near, right at the door. And I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have happened. Heaven and earth will not pass away, but my words may, may pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. So we're in very peculiar times. Even scripture tells us that you will see it and you will know. You will know in your heart. You will know in your heart. Things are going bad right, left, and center. But you will know in your heart that this is the time to stay in God. To go deeper. A deepening. 
I was so blessed by the, the word and the prayer this morning. A deep mean God is calling us to a deeper place, a deeper place in Him in this season. And I would I would stop after this verse, after this um but about the day or hour no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven or the son, but only the father. And then it says, and this is my favorite scripture for the for the season. It says, As it in it was in the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving out in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. That is how the coming of the Son of Man will be. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two men will be grinding. One with a hand mill and one will be taken and the other will be left. So people will be partying and eating and drinking. Unconscious of the times and the seasons. So what kind of man do you have to be? So be aware of the times and the seasons. Because the times and the seasons are what give us strength. Let's open to Genesis 49, verse 14. It says, Issachar is a strong donkey lying between two burdens. He saw the rest was good and that the land was pleasant. Yet he bowed his shoulder to bear the burden and he became a band of slaves. Issachar is one of the sons that Jacob blessed. He says, Issachar, every other person had a, a fantastic blessing. Dan would be the judge of his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Joseph had an amazing blessing. Yet Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between two burdens. A donkey lying down between two burdens. So I think they might have put something across and then put you know, burdens on him. And then he saw that rest was good. And that the land was pleasant. Yet he bowed his shoulder to bear the burden and became a band of slaves. Then we hear about Issachar again in First Chronicles 12. It says, these are the number of men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said. And verse 32 would say, from Issachar, men who understood the times and the seasons, who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. So that was the destiny of Issachar. He saw that the land was good. He saw that all things were pleasurable on the earth. But he bent his back to take the burden. He bent his back. All his brothers had... Uh, Joseph was a fruitful vine. Every other person. But he bent his back and took the burden. And we can see now that in all those men that helped David, we, underst we understand from scripture that Issachar understood times and seasons and knew what Israel should do. In this time, we have to be like the tribe of Issachar. Not only in their understanding, but in their strength. Everywhere you see Issachar, they are calling them for battle. They were men of battle. Men of battle. And we cannot fight our battles by physical battle. We fight our battle in the spirit. So that call to deepening, call to a deeper place in God, call to a a rest in God. A deeper rest in God. God is calling us to bear the burden of the kingdom. So how many of you are chosen? 
How many of you are called? God calls us. We're all called. Yet our response to him, our response, what is your response to God? Our response to him is what matters. Hebrews 11 is very popular. It gives us the definition of faith. It says, now faith is the confidence in what we see and the assurance about what we do not see. It says, now faith is the confidence in what we see. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see. You know, I was reading, um, I was reading Hebrews recently and then I realized that faith is God. Faith is not faith. Faith is God. It says faith is the confidence in what we hope for, Christ. And the assurance in what we do not see, Christ. So it's easy to be called, to be chosen, to have a burden, because the Lord leaves us with burdens that, that juggle our hearts till we answer him. It's easy. But we have faith in God. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one that pleased God. So Enoch, if we are saying that faith is God, Enoch pleased God. So it's understandable how Enoch could please God because Enoch had faith. So what we hope for, God. The assurance of what we do not see, God. Enoch looked at God. He looked at God and he followed God. He didn't look right. He didn't look left. He just said, God. That was it for him. God. And you know that he was not. When you read further in scripture, you know that he was not. What did Enoch do? He pursued God. He pursued God. It says, by faith, Abraham went called to go to a place where he would later receive his inheritance. Obeyed and went. Even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking for a city whose foundations, whose, with foundations, whose architect and builder was God. Abraham looked for God till he died. He looked for God. And all the men of faith. And it says, these were all, and then the end says, these were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us. So that only together with us can they be made perfect. So in their times, in those times when there were no, there were not a vast majority of people serving God, these men singled themselves out. Understanding the times, Noah built an ark, despised by everybody, while they were marrying he was building his ark until the day Noah locked the ark. They were still marrying and dancing and drinking. So that the times and seasons are not determined by your eye. It cannot be determined by what you are seeing in the world. It can be determined by Instagram. It can be determined by social media. The time and seasons are determined by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is in His church. You and I and in his church, in the physical presence of his church. So the times are now. The day of salvation is now. Matthew 12 lets us know that from the time of John the Baptist and even far back now that we are seeing, from the time of John the Baptist and even far back, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. So it's not new. So the tribulations that we're going to see now, Paul went through. The tribulations that we're going to see now, the trials that we're going to see, Paul went through. The trials that we're going to see, John the Baptist went through. Yet, it says that the violent have taken it by force. Abraham in his time took his by force. Noah in his time 
took it by force. And you in your time, you will take it by force. So tell yourself, say, I take it by force today in the name of Jesus. I take by force my destiny. I take by force my purpose. I have a knowledge of the times and the season of my life and the church and the kingdom. Amen. The kingdom of God is now. Let's open to Romans 8, 18 to 39. You know, while we exist in the world, while the trials are going on, you will not believe that God has promised that as long as we are in the kingdom of God, we keep ascending. So of course, the times aren't bad. Of course, there's a lot of things. Of course, they will be pressed by the enemy. But as you take it by force in your daily life, as you take it by force, as you take your destiny by force, you are within the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, there is life eternally. So we do not exist in the world. We exist in the kingdom of God. And even in these times of trial and tribulation, even as we wait on the Lord, we are waiting in joy because we are overcoming. We are overcomers. We don't have the testimony of the world. We have the testimony of God. It says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that should be revealed in us. The glory that shall be revealed in us on the day that we will see his face. That glory is what we are all waiting for. That glory is what we are all looking for. That glory is what we are walking towards. Because this world, we are just here. or passing through the world. It's not our home. Like the song will say. It's not our home. We are passing through the world. But there is a glory to be revealed in us that we look forward to. That we wait upon. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Are you that child? For creation, wait in eager expectation for the children. If you don't go on your stead, as in, I just want to announce to you that your lives dependent on your life. Maybe you don't know. Maybe that's why you're still struggling. If you know, you look at God and take God as Enoch did. Lives are dependent on your life. You don't have a choice. You have to wake up and get up and then go and do what God asks you to do. You don't have a choice. You don't have the luxury of weakness because he is your strength. Yeah. You don't have the luxury of wicked, weakness. So the only way you'll be weak is if you're not looking at God. You don't have the luxury of weakness. And it says, For creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into freedom and the glory of the children of God. So God has the hope that creation will be liberated from bondage to decay and brought to freedom and glory of the children of God. So God has hope in you. God has hope in you. God has hope. Jesus has come and finished the work. He has come. He has made everything easy. Now you can go to him and you are saved. Now you can go to him and you have forgiveness. Now you have the spirit of God that was left by him for you to succeed in life. You don't have a choice, you don't have an option, you don't have, you can't even say you did not know. It's like somebody just came and celebrated your birthday for you. Right? You brought cake, you bought ice cream, and you're sitting in the corner. Like, the only thing you need to do is just walk into the stead of which God has created you for. You walk to God. Going deeper in God this season. And while we've heard about the people that did well, while we've heard about Noah and Abraham following God and looking forward to God, we also understand by Hebrews 3 that there was a generation that did not believe in God. So they could not rest in Him. Because our belief in God has the determine, determines whether or not we rest in him. 
So Hebrews 3 verse 7. It says today if you hear his voice Today if the Lord is speaking to your heart Do not harden your heart As you did in rebellion Speaking about the Israelites During the time of testing in the wilderness Where your ancestors tested and tried me Though for 40 years they saw what I did That is why I was angry with that generation I said their hearts were always astray And they have not known my ways So I declared on oath in my anger that they shall never enter my rest. So they could not enter the rest. And that generation perished. That generation passed away. That generation did not reach the promised land. They saw the things that God was doing. They had the nudging in his heart. In their heart. They knew the times and the seasons of God. God was providing for them in the wilderness. Imagine having food. God was providing for them in the wilderness. They were comfortable. Yet, they complained. Yet, there was unbelief in their heart. It says, um, like the carcass to the vultures. Right? That's all we read. Like the carcass to the vultures. Wherever there's a carcass, there must be vultures. So you cannot say that you do not know the times and the seasons. You, do, you cannot say you don't know that God is real. You can't say that the Lord is not, you don't know that the Lord is calling you. So what is your response to the call? You have been predestined. You have been set a fat table. You have been inaugurated into your own life by the blood you have been given new life in Christ you have been given everything so why are you not following God why are you distracted by the world God can give you the things in the world he said seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added so every time they say follow God you are just thinking oh my God my human head <laughs> oh my God my shoe God is the provision, provider. God, in fact, is the inventor of the, as in, God created all things. You know that there is nothing in the world that exists that he did not create, right? So how much more you, his child, why would he not give you all things? You cannot be like the pregnant woman on that day, carrying burdens of the world. Sometimes we're even envious of the world. We just look at them and just think, oh my God, they're just living the life. They are living in death. And you are supposed to preach to them life. Yeah. But you are too small. Not, yes. Not because God said you are small. But because you know you are not wearing shoe. So you cannot talk to anybody. Yet the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And the kingdom will not come to an end until the gospel, like your pastor said, until you preach the gospel, until the sound reaches the end of the earth. So you are not small. You are not small. You are not small for this season. You are not small for your destiny. You are not small for your life. You are not small. You take it by force. And it says he declared an oath in anger that they will never enter the rest. So if God keeps calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you and you are not listening, how will you enter the rest of God? Because the rest is available to us. It says in verse 4 that now who, those who believe in him, what we said, faith, right? God. Those who follow God, believe in what they cannot see. Those who follow God. Now who, those who believe do enter his rest so that you can rest in this world while existing in the world in God you can rest in God Noah rested in God Abraham rested in God Enoch rested in God it says so see to it brothers and sisters that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God it's so easy to turn away from the living God. So easy. There's so much distractions. Us of the flesh. What you see. There's so much distractions. 
So he says, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. And then make your gods, your bellies, <laughs> like scripture will say. Make your God your bellies. And you bring wrath and condemnation on your own life. And then you come and cry to God that, God, why don't you love me? Are you in God? Are you following God? It says, sit with brothers and sisters, that none of you has, who, none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today. As long as the day is called today. Like there's no, I don't, it's just something that you're waiting for. I mean, the only thing I'm waiting for is the coming of Christ. Like is there something you're waiting for to enter? Like Christ has died though. Yeah, he has defeated the devil. So it's actually, so everything that the devil um, throws at us is in our mind. You know he has defeated the devil. So anything the devil throws at us is for us to keep by force. And like she said, I don't have this pain anymore. Because he has died now. He has defeated sin and the grave and he has defeated death. And The devil is just trying to lure you to his house. That's where he stays. He stays in hell. So he wants to lure you there so you can be enjoying eternal life with him. But we are going to enjoy eternal life with God. Amen. So he says, as, as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. And as just and has just been said, as has just been said in the former scriptures. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in rebellion. And then he says, Who were those that heard and rebelled? Were they not all those, all those that Moses led out of Egypt and with whom God was angry with for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness and to whom God swore that they would never enter his rest be, if, not, if, not those, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. So, one of the things between you and God is your belief in God. Like, do you actually believe that he made the heavens and the earth? It's easier, like, I keep juggling myself back to that space. No matter what I face in life, I keep juggling myself back to that space. Like, it's God, oh. Like, okay, there's trial, oh, there's tribulation, but it is God, oh. It is God. He created the heavens and the earth. He created me. It's God, oh. God is powerful. God is big. And scripture says the fullness of the Godhead is inside of my body. I carry God as much as I know it. As much as I understand. As much as I know it. As much as I'm led by the Spirit. I am a child of God. I carry God. As much as I believe that there is God. I carry God in me. So they could not enter into his rest. There's rest, there's abundant rest for us. So it's not that God will just allow the trials and tribulations to come at us. There's rest in God for you. There's rest in God for you. But one of the things that stays between you and your rest is belief. Your unbelief. Do you actually believe in God? Or we are playing religion? Because it's easy to wear your clothes and come out of your house and come to church. I don't want to be like the sinners, but how is your heart? Is your heart stayed on God? Does your heart actually believe that God will save you? Does your heart actually believe that God... Does your heart believe that God created the heavens and the earth? And the vastness of all things? Does your heart believe that he called you and then predestined you for a particular purpose? For the purpose of your life and then the ultimate purpose of the kingdom because that's the only thing we're doing on earth don't let anybody deceive you not be deceived we are here so that we will go through this life and then arrive at Christ nothing else every other thing is just okay providing manna for us providing food providing clothes while we are in his rest but the ultimate goal is God is Christ it's Christ to be changed into his same image that day when we see his face, we shall be like him. The thing used to make me happy. It's very sweet. I don't understand. Like, how will I just be like Christ? Hey, I can't imagine it. It would be so sweet. I didn't... 
creation are waiting in eager expectations of the sons of God. They are waiting for you. They are waiting for you. Let's just quickly take Hebrews 4. It says, therefore, since the promise of entering the rest of God still stands, let us be careful that none of you should be found falling short of it. For we also have the have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who believed. I just said that one of the things that would keep you from God is unbelief. They did not share the faith of those who obeyed. So you can believe and then you are in your room. I don't, well, I don't know how you can believe and be in your room, not obeying. <laughs> but apparently you can believe in God and then be crippled by fear for obedience. So that between you and your destiny is first your belief and then your obedience. Because if you believe that it is God, maker of the heavens and the earth, that is sending you to that person, you will go. You will go because you know that the Spirit of the Lord will lead you and guide you and be there for you. You will go says, for we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them. No value to them. And we are hearing the word of God today. How much value do you place on the word of God? You hear the word of God from the from Apostle Michael every Sunday. How much value do you place on the word of God? Do you believe that the word of God is life? Do you believe that the Lord is talking to you? Because you can come to church and not believe that it's you that they are talking to. My dear, if you are here and the spirit of God is here, and you have sang the spirit of God, you know, governor of the city. And he is here with us. By just your presence, you will know. You are supposed to be here today. You could have been anywhere else. The Lord dragged you here. So whatever you hear, wherever you go and sit down to hear the Lord, the Lord is speaking to you. If they are even prophesying on someone else and you are there, my dear, it's your prophecy too. The Lord is speaking to you. There is no, there is no reason why you should be there. There's no reason why you should be there if the Lord is not speaking to you too. So how much value do we place on his word when it's spoken? Now we who have believed, now we who believe, enter his rest. Just as God has declared. So I declared an, on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day God rested from all his works. And again in the passage above he says, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore since it remains for some to enter the rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again 